It's a joy for me to bring the voice of the Toronto Blue Jays for a long time, friend of mine, colleague Jerry Howarth, on to talk about Roy Halladay. Jerry, good morning. Well, good morning, Brian, and I smiled there when you used the word genius because that's really what Roy Halladay was on the mound, uh, 12 years in Toronto, 4 in Philadelphia, and what a great person. It wasn't uh, all easy for Roy Halladay. I know your mind goes back to the day in 1995 uh, when uh, he was drafted 17th overall by Toronto, um, made his major league debut a couple of uh, three years after 1995. But take us back to when he was drafted. What did you know about him? Well, I didn't know too much about him. Uh, I really don't get to know those kids until it's about their third or fourth year where they come to spring training. And then you meet them as teenagers. And Roy I met, and I was just uh, really impressed with his demeanor and how quiet he was when about his business, even as a young man right out of high school, as that uh, number one pick showed, as you mentioned. And you always like to see that where someone indicates with his with body language, it's not about him, it's about the team and blending in and, and kind of getting used to your surroundings. And then in his first start, he almost throws a no-hitter. He's got uh, one out to go, and Bobby Higginson hits a home <laughs> run. That was, I think, 98 or somewhere in that area. And that was kind of a glimpse of what was to come. But what you always respect about people in any walk of life, how do they come back from adversity? And after throwing a near no-hitter in his first major league start after pitching a little bit in the bullpen, in 2001 he's demoted to Dunedin, Florida. He's really down and out. Mel Queen takes him under his wing. They begin to restructure both his mechanics and his mindset, and as they say, the rest is history. Yeah, it certainly was. Came up through AAA. And funny, I remember that game with uh, Higginson when he hit the home run because uh, as you were, you guys were calling, it certainly looked like he was in control. And I, I think it was right at the end of the season, wasn't it, Jerry? It was the last game of the yes, season. Yes, 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 I remember that. And Higgins, I think Higginson, if my memory serves me right, and I shouldn't say this because it doesn't all the time, I'm not sure if he didn't come off the bench to do it as well, and the old pro kind of got him because, you know, the team sort of had some reserves playing. But, yeah, I do remember that game uh, very well. He speaks so well. He and his wife were such wonderful, wonderful uh, members of the Toronto community here. I thought it was just a class act that he would come back and pay tribute to the organization that uh, actually made all of this possible for him. Well, when you think of Roy Halliday, you just said it, Brian, you think of family, his wife Brandy, the two kids, and his bigger family from a professional standpoint, the Blue Jays, and that's where he wanted to finish. He started with his family, went to Philadelphia, enjoyed those years there, went to the playoffs through a no-hitter in his first playoff appearance. What? How good is that? And, but his family is Toronto, and that was nice for all the fans to see and appreciate. You know, you mentioned his wife, Brandy, and Jerry, you know her much better than I do, and you've done the food drives with the Blue Jays' wives. I got to meet her through the fan after all of those years. And I'll never forget when Roy came in and he signed a pretty decent contract. I can't remember the exact number. Uh, with the Blue Jays at the time, and she was so gracious and almost embarrassed when uh, she was talking about the you know the life they'd had as youngsters uh, growing up, and now the amount of money he was receiving in his paychecks every two weeks. They truly seemed like humble people to me. Well, they were, and that was reflected in two of his contracts, Brian, where he took far less than market value in order to stay, and he encouraged other free agents who were leaving Toronto to stay as well and enjoy the journey to the playoffs through Toronto rather than other teams where it looked good on the outside. And I respected Roy for doing that not once but twice, and that's why when he finally did leave for Philadelphia, it was time to do that as well. When I was researching this, knowing that you were going to kindly come on with me, Jerry, I looked it up and I saw he's one of three pitchers along, as you as you tell us all the time, along with Dave Steve and Jimmy Key to throw more than 2,000 innings for the Jays. His numbers go on and on and on with wins, 148, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Certainly sterling numbers for the Toronto Blue Jays. When you look back at all the, the pitching staff, I know you've been asked this many times, where does Roy Halladay sort of rank right amongst all the Blue Jay pitchers that you've called throughout and got to know throughout the years? Number one. Uh, I thought Dave Steve for years was number one, seven-time All-Star with average two, kind of below average teams, and he stood out as well. But Roy Halladay surpassed Dave, and Dave was uh, really so good at what he did at that particular right. time and was even on the 92 team that won the World Series, so I was happy Steve got a ring in that regard and then would always come to spring training after that and really got to know Dave, too, and uh, enjoyed him immensely. But Roy's right now the number one pitcher the Blue Jays have ever had for what he did on the field and that model of consistency regarding a work ethic. It was never about him. It was always about the team. And 
What I admired most about him, Brian, was the mantra that he had, a two-word mantra that he got from Harvey Dorfman in his book, The Mental ABCs of Pitching, and that was simply, next pitch. And if all athletes could adapt that mm. and not let adversity hinder their performances, that's what you want. It's professionalism through and through. And for Roy, whether it was an umpire's call, a play not made behind him, an error, it was always give me the ball, next pitch, and that's what he would execute that next pitch, and that's how you do it. That's a great call and very, very adroitly said, Jerry. I think, you know, out of all his things, the 1,495 strikeouts and shutouts 15, I think the one thing that might separate him from Jimmy Key and Dave Steve, amongst the other ones, is the number of complete games he had with 49. That's so true, and today complete games are kind of a, a, a byproduct of a good bullpen where you, you have your setup man in the eighth inning and you have your closer in the ninth, and if a starter can go seven, that's what you want. And ideally, that's a quality start. Seven innings giving up no more than three earned runs, even though if you go six, that's acknowledged as a quality start. But Roy surpassed all of that and reminds me a little bit, too, of my partner on radio, Jack Morris, who threw 175, I think, complete games in his career and it was always, I want to start and finish what I began here at game time, and you really respect those kind of athletes. 